Hello everyone, back to you today's second video. So we're going to have a look at the uh, JMA free monthly forecast. It's going to take us from uh, next month, February, through to April, the middle of the spring. Um, it's just for fun, it's just a snapshot of what this uh, particular long-range model is showing for the uh, coming three months. But of course, as ever with any forecast beyond sort of five to ten days, it does need a big health warning. Actually, we'll be doing the uh, second seasonal model roundup for the spring of 2018, uh, this weekend. And, um, of course, this will make up part of that uh, update. The JMA uh, will make up part of the uh, second seasonal roundup for the spring of 2018. Uh, doesn't cover the full spring period, of course, but it covers enough of it now to be included in that uh, seasonal model roundup. But we won't have time to touch on everything that you can see with the JMA, because we'll have something like 11 or 12 long-range models to put with it, um, and we can't go in-depth into all of those longer-range models because don't have time. So we also like to uh, take this one out and sort of isolate it and uh, see what it's showing in its own terms. Uh, and that's what we're going to do for today's second update. Just to say that earlier today, we released uh, the video looking at the weather next week to 10 days. And we're asking a little bit of a speculative question, whether the beast from these could be unleashed in uh, February. It's not impossible that we might pull in some very cold winds through the first week of February. But I'll let you have a look and uh, see what you think to that video. It's here on the homepage. Just scroll down the page a little bit and you'll find it above the snow desk. Right, let's get on with the uh, video then. I'm going to start off with the 500 millibar hydronomaly flow charts, broken down into monthly periods from the uh, long-range JMA uh, model. Um, so we're beginning in February, of course, and uh, if everything's working correctly, that's only one month away. So the idea is that you f the further out you go with any forecast, the more reliable it becomes. So if everything's working as it should with this uh, seasonal model, then this should be the most reliable part of all of this. February would be the most reliable part, but the further out you go, the more unreliable it gets, because it doesn't always work out quite like that. Um, but uh, hopefully this uh, is the more reliable bit of the update. So this is the uh, Northern Hemisphere view from the pole down. That's the North Pole of the Northern Hemisphere uh, just there. The mid latitudes of the Northern Hemisphere are uh, around the uh, edges, if I just give you some idea where everybody is. So that's America and uh, Canada over there. This is Europe over here. That's sort of uh, Russia, Siberia there. Asia is going to be down here. Uh, the Pacific Ocean is over there. The Atlantic is just there. And perhaps most importantly for this update, given that uh, people are going to be watching it, British Isles is uh, just there. So now you know where everybody is, let's have a look what the uh, JMA is showing for the 500 mm height anomaly to February. And it's placing a trough of below average heights over to the northeast of the British Isles with above average heights through the central Atlantic. The jet stream is going something uh, rather like that. So we are just about being placed on the cold side of the jet here. It's a fairly unsettled looking signal and potentially quite cool at times as well. I think we are entrenching some northerly, uh, some northerly um, air into that trough of low pressure. It's not a desperately cold scene, I have to emphasize that, but it is a reasonably cool signal, certainly, and you would expect some cold weather with that, I think, and also you would expect with some wintry conditions at times, given the trough is centering just to the northeast of the British Isles. So overall, quite a cool, unsettled month being signalled for uh, February. We're on the cold side of the jet stream, and you would expect some wintry potential to be in there at times. Uh, this is uh, March, so the JMA in March is uh, going for a below average heights to be to our north, northwest, above average heights to be to our southwest. And so this is more typical of what you expect to see, really. We've got the um, jet stream coming through the country rather like that. So it's a pretty flat looking pattern across the Atlantic. And overall, you expect a milder month with that. We're bringing the air in from off the Atlantic. Probably some dryish weather at times in the north, unsettled, uh, some dryish weather at times in the south, southwest, more unsettled in the north. 
all places would be unsettled at times because it's an Atlantic flow. The main thing would be the temperature is uh, quite mild there in March. And then we go through to April. Now, this is three months away, so very speculative. But for the middle month of the spring, it is seeing more quite cold potential, I think. We've got above average heights there around Greenland and going through the central Atlantic. Below average heights are over and then elongating to the south and southeast of the British Isles. The jet stream, therefore, is uh, doing something a bit like that. That looks like quite a big trough, actually, within the 500 millibar flow. And so that, after a mild start to the spring in March, probably implies that April could have quite a delayed sort of spring, and you would expect some pretty cold weather with that at times. I think the air would be coming in from a northerly uh, type direction, and of course with the trough there, it is, <coughs> excuse me, it is quite unsettled as well. So quite chilly there for April. Uh, hints at but some very late season frost, I would have thought. Probably the risk of some snow as well. Actually, it's not too late to get snow. And uh, really, just quite a delayed uh, sort of spring is possible there after a milder month in uh, March. Let's have a look at the temperature and precipitation anomalies that go with those heights. So we'll look at the tropical and mid-latitude view. So with this, the equator uh, of the world is just there. We've got the uh, northern hemisphere on the northern side of the equator. The uh, southern hemisphere is on the southern side of the equator, of course. The poles are off the chart. We can't see the south and north pole, but the south pole is uh, down there. And then the North Pole, which we were just looking at, the North Pole view down. So we don't need to see it again, really. But the North Pole is uh, up here, again, off the uh, chart. Uh, and again, just so you know where everybody is, so this is America and Canada here. We've got the Pacific Ocean over there. We've got uh, sort of Asia down here. Russia, Siberia, is up there. Europe is over here. The Atlantic is just there. And let's get rid of all of that. Show you where British Isles is. We're in the top right hand corner of the chart as you are looking at it. So we're beginning again in February. A reminder of the 500 bit of our height anomaly for February, where we've got that trough over and also to the north and northeast of British Isles. It looks like we're on the cool or in the cold side of the jet stream. Now, temperature anomalies aren't coming in too low. It's a little bit surprising. I would have thought temperature anomalies should be a little bit cooler than this. They're actually coming out a little bit milder than average. It is still an Atlantic-driven flow, so I suppose that's why temperature's holding up. But I think we would entrench some northerly episodes into that flow. So uh, I've got a feeling February could have more cold potential actually, than that is uh, indicating. The precipitation anomaly is above average, so it's going for an unsettled month uh, with above average precipitation likely in February. Let's have a look at the mean wind direction. And uh, you can see that, uh, it is, so it is an Atlantic-driven wind. I suppose that's the main point. The black arrow is always hard to make out on these charts, but they're generally coming in that sort of direction. So from the north, northwest, which at the very least implies some cool weather at times. The jet stream is uh, coming through around there. So we are on the cold side of the jet stream, if the JMA is right, with wind from the northwest. What else? We're not talking about a severely cold month. That wasn't really suggested on the height anomalies. We're not talking about uh, severe cold with that, because it's Atlantic driven flow, but it's coming from a northerly part of the Atlantic. So I suppose a continuation in some ways of, weather, of the weather that we've had throughout the winter with on off cold snaps and milder interludes in between. Uh, so let's go through to March. Now, this looks like a much more straightforwardly mild month in uh, March. The above average heights are down there to our southwest. We've got below average heights. Can't really see them, but they're up to the northwest. And the jet stream is quite flat and coming through the country from off the Atlantic uh, like that. The precipitation anomaly, it's north-south split. So northern parts of the country are a bit wetter than average. Southern parts of the country, close to that ridge from the Azores, a bit uh, drier than average. And as I say, it's a straightforwardly mild month. So I agree with this. The model is going for milder than average temperature anomalies. And unlike February, when I think might be a little bit 
uh, too mild. I think that's about right for March. In fact, it might even be uh, milder than that. Maybe we should be placing those yellow colours, but uh, such as we see over there across the country, given the west southwesterly flow. So certainly a mild start to the spring would be probable. Uh, the wind direction. Uh, again, it's sort of hinting at being a little bit northwesterly, but the difference, you see the black arrows are coming across the Atlantic uh, from there, and then they're going down rather like that. So although the wind is still a little bit northwesterly, it has quite a southwesterly sort of component to it. So that's the reason that March should be a more straightforwardly mild month compared to uh, February. And then we go through to April month three, so this is the most unreliable part of this update, but we have the trough here through the UK and also over here at Central and Central Europe, the above average heights through the middle of the Atlantic, and that means we're on the cool side of the jet. So in fact, it looks like how quite a dip in the jet going on in the 500 millibar flow, quite a, a trough extending through the country there. It's an unsettled month in April, precipitation anomalies are coming out quite substantially above average so very unsettled month being signaled uh, and a cold of an average month as well which you would expect because we've got that dip in the jet stream got the trough within the 500 mil of our flow so you'd expect a colder than average month that's what the model is seeing for uh, april and you have a look at the mean wind direction. It looks like it's more or less northerly uh, for this month. So we've lost sort of that Atlantic component. And really, we're just bringing the air down uh, from quite a long way north. So that's the reason this is a much more straightforwardly cold, colder than average month in uh, April. That does look a bit dismal, I have to say, uh, for April. Um, it isn't really a month that you want to be uh, overly cold because uh, everything is kind of springing into life in April uh, so a bit of a delayed spring is possible there if the jam is right the only same grace is it's three months away and it is very much subject to change I think February is the one that we need to concentrate on uh, because it's been closest to us hopefully the model is working correctly that's the most reliable part and there is a chance of more uh, on off cold snaps through the course of February. The mean wind direction looks like it's from the northwest, so therefore uh, we're very often being placed off the cold side of jet stream. And so as the low pressures come through, particularly on their backsides, you would expect some uh, snow at times. And uh, of course, it is possible because this doesn't really show anything happening over Scandinavia, but we know within the sort of shorter range models, uh, like the GFS and the ECM, they're kind of beginning to hint that the early part of February might see a rise in pressure over Scandinavia. And so that's where today's, the title of today's first video, uh, Could We Unleash the Beast in the early part of February, uh, that's where that comes in. Now, there's no sign of that with the JMA seasonal output, but um, of course, you perhaps wouldn't expect there to be because uh, Scandinavian highs are always very difficult to predict. In fact, we'll know more about what the JMA is seeing for February tomorrow when we do JMA Friday, and that's going to be our weekly month ahead look ahead. We'll uh, compare the JMA month ahead, not seasonal, but month ahead. Uh, forecast with the CFS V2 month head forecast and we'll see what both of them are showing. Will they have any signs of the beast being unleashed in February? You'll find out tomorrow. Right, I say this uh, seasonal update from the JMA covering February to April will be placed or will be added or will be included, uh, I should probably say, into the second seasonal model roundup for the spring of 2018. And uh, that's going to be with you over the weekend. So watch out for that. It will get something like 12 or 13 long-range models together and see what they're all showing for this spring for only the second time. So uh, come back for that uh, at weekend. And tomorrow, of course, it's JMA Friday. Right, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.